Hello and welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be having a look at the integral of 1 on x to the 4 plus 4, integrating that with respect to x. So this looks like a relatively simple problem, but as we'll soon find out, it's a little bit more challenging than it might first seem. So the first step that we're going to do here is we're actually just going to try and break this up into different factors on our denominator here. So the way that we'll go about approaching that is, well, clearly we've got an x squared and a plus 2 in here. And again, an x squared and a plus 2. So that way we know that we'll get the x to the 4 and that plus 4. But now we need to figure out, well, what else can we put in here that will help cancel everything out? Since we know that if we just have x squared plus 2, then we'd end up with some x squared terms in our denominator. And we know that's not exactly what we're after. So by inspection, pretty quickly, you can probably guess that it's going to be a plus 2x and a minus 2x. Okay, and so that's our new problem now. So we've just factorized that denominator into two separate terms here. Okay, so the next step is we're going to use partial fraction decomposition to decompose this singular fraction into two separate fractions. So let's have a quick look at that now. So the way that we're going to use partial fraction decomposition and the way that it works is, well, what we do is we write out what we've got first. So we had 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then we have our other factor of x squared minus 2x plus 2. And what we want to do now is we're going to write this as the sum of two fractions where our denominators are just the separate factors from earlier. So let's say for this first one, we have maybe x squared minus 2x plus 2. And now for the second one, we are going to have x squared plus 2x plus 2. Okay, and so what we need to have on our numerators in order to figure out what actually goes up there is we're just going to set some constants a, b, c, and d such that we'll have ax plus b, cx plus d. And there's a bit of theory as to why we set it exactly like this. I probably won't go into that now, but what I'll let you do is I'll let you have a quick think about how this is going to work. And so pretty quickly you can see that, well, we'll be multiplying our numerators by simply cross multiplication so that way we end up with the exact same denominator and so that way now we'll end up with a very lengthy expression of 1 is equal to well ax plus b in brackets times by x squared plus 2x plus 2 and then plus well we've got cx plus d times by x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, and so after you expand that and then start equating the left-hand side and the right-hand side and start solving that, whether you go about that using simultaneous equations or whether you want to make a matrix and go through Gaussian elimination, that's all good and well, whichever method you prefer. But I'm going to skip ahead going through that because it's rather just straightforward uh, linear algebra. And so I'll just go straight forward to the results. And so what we end up with now is simply, well, the integral of minus 1 on 8x plus 1 on 4, all over x squared minus 2x plus 2. Integrate that with respect to x. And then we have plus the integral of 1 on 8x plus 1 on 4. Again, now all over x squared plus 2x plus 2, and then dx. Okay, so we see that we can take out a factor of 1 on 8, and so let's just quickly do that, so that way we can neaten up our integrals. So we'll end up with 1 on 8 out the front of, well, that'll become minus x plus 2 over, again, x squared minus 2x plus 2 dx, and then plus 1 on 8 out the front of the integral of x plus 2 over x squared plus 2x plus 2 dx. Okay, and so now we're looking at this form here and we're thinking, hopefully, that looks, looks very, very similar to when we're able to just integrate a problem where we have a logarithmic answer. So we see that when the numerator is the derivative of the denominator. And so we're very, very close to that. So at the moment, our denominator, x squared minus 2x plus 2, the derivative of that is 2x minus 2. So we're kind of almost there. So the first thing that we might want to do is just take out a factor of a negative from this first integral here. And so then we'll end up with x minus 2 uh, and a negative out the front there. And so let's see what we have now. Well, it's looking a little bit better. Now we have that positive x and that negative 2, although we're still not quite there because we have just an x by itself and not a 2x. 
So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually just going to multiply top and bottom by a factor of 2, just so that way we can get to that stage where we have a 2x there. And so let's see what happens now. So when I expand these brackets out, multiplying that by 2, I'll end up with 2x minus 4. Okay, so that's looking a little bit nicer, but we still have it that this isn't exactly the right numerator if we wanted to take the derivative of this denominator in the brackets here. And that's owing to the fact that we've got a negative 4. So again, what I'm going to do here is I'm now just going to quickly break this negative 4 up into saying it's equal to, well, negative 2 minus 2. And so that is the exact same thing as saying negative 4, but simply writing it as two separate terms there. And so what that's going to allow me to do now is to separate this entire first term into, well, minus 1 on 8 out the front of the integral of, let's see what we've got here, 2x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 2. And we've still got a factor of 2 down the bottom here. And so we can actually bring that out the front now and make that a 1 on 16 over here. But then we'll also have, well, let's see, we'll then have a minus 1 on 8 out the front of the integral of minus 2 over x squared minus 2x plus 2. And this, again, will have that 2 in the denominator there. But this one here, we see that will just cancel out with that numerator there. We just end up with a plus 1. And here we can take that negative out now and just cancel that out. So that's going to be a plus 1 on 8 and then just a positive 1 there. Okay, and so we see that we can actually do pretty much the exact same procedure for this right-hand integral. So this bad boy over here. And so what that will end up becoming now is simply a plus 1 on 16, since we don't have to worry about the negative in this case plus 1 on 16 out the front of, well, 2x plus 2 this time, over x squared plus 2x plus 2. And then we're going to have a plus 1 on 8 out the front of 1 all over x squared plus 2x plus 2. And all of these terms should have dx on them as well, of course. Okay, so we are definitely making a lot of headway here. So let's see what happens now. So we see with this term here and this term here, our first and, and third integrals, we see that this is in fact just going to simplify to the case where we can just write it as minus 1 on 16, now the logarithm of our denominator here. So x squared minus 2x plus 2. And we don't have to worry about absolute values for these terms here since we know that this is always positive. And you can tell that because we have a positive coefficient at the front of x squared and that this is going to have complex roots. So we have minus 1 on 16 natural log of x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus, again, 1 on 16 times the natural log of x squared plus 2x plus 2. And so now it just leaves us to figure out these two integrals here. So we've already worked out those two, so I'll get rid of those. And now let's have a quick think about, well, 1 on x squared minus 2x plus 2. I'll bring that down here, so that way we can have a look at it in a little bit more detail. So we see that we'll have 1 over, what was it? It was x squared plus 2x plus 2 dx. And we also had a 1 on x squared minus 2x plus 2 dx. And of course, there was the factor of the 1 on 8 out the front, but we'll worry about that later. So if I look at this denominator here, x squared plus 2x plus 2, well, I see that that is very, very close for us to just saying that this is going to be x squared plus 1, all squared. But what were we missing? Well, there was just going to be a plus 1. So now that way, if we expanded this out, we'd end up with x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 1. And that's exactly what we had above earlier. And so we'll be able to do the exact same thing for this one over here. So this will become now x minus 1, all squared, plus 1. And so what we can do now is we can say, let's say, let u equal to x plus 1. And so that way we know that du is going to be equal to dx, since du dx equals 1. So therefore du equals dx. What that now lets us do is rewrite this problem as the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1 du. And hopefully we can identify that as simply being the integral that gets us tan inverse of u. 
Okay, and so following the exact same procedure for this integral over here, maybe you'll use a different term. So let's say maybe let alpha equal to x minus 1, maybe something like that. And then going through the exact same procedure, we'll find that we'll get a solution of tan inverse of alpha. Okay, so let's quickly write down what these will become now. So we'll have a tan inverse of u, which was x plus 1. And then we have that tan inverse of alpha, which was x minus 1. So if we go back up to our problem now and we rewrite these solutions in, let's see what we get. Well, we said that this one, so again, that 1 on 8 out the front, so let's not forget that now. So we'll have a 1 on 8 tan inverse, and this was the one with the minus in it. So we'll say that this was equal to x minus 1 inside that tan inverse argument there. And then we have plus 1 on 8 times by tan inverse of x plus 1. And there we are. So there is a couple ways that we can quickly neaten this up. So you might want to take a factor of 1 on 16 out the front. And in fact, let's quickly do that now. And so let's see what we get now. So that will disappear. This will disappear. That will become just a negative. And we'll put that 1 on 16 out the front there. And instead of writing 1 on 8, that will become a 2. And the same for this over here. And so now as well, you might notice that we can probably collect these logarithms as well and then rewrite it as 1, and that's completely okay. Uh, some people will also like to take that negative out from here, so that way you'll end up with the sum and difference of two different tan inverse functions. And you can do that as well, since this is just an odd function. So you can write this as minus 2 tan inverse of 1 minus x. Uh, I don't really see why you would want to do that, but I have seen people perform similar operations like that just so that way their final answer has a plus tan inverse and then a minus tan inverse. I don't know why, but it's up to you, uh, whatever way you'd prefer. But as it stands, this is our final answer here. So we can take out that 1 on 16 out the front, minus natural logarithm of x squared minus 2x plus 2 plus the natural logarithm of x squared plus 2x plus 2 plus 2 times the tangent inverse of x minus 1 plus 2 times the tangent inverse of x plus 1. And as we note, this was an indefinite integral, so we cannot forget to add our plus c on the end there. So that's quite a hefty solution for what seemed like such a, a rather simple problem way back at the start when we had just 1 on x to the 4 plus 4. Can you believe it that that is the solution that we end up with here? So if you have enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, then please consider subscribing. And if you have any recommendations for problems that you'd like to see me go through, then please leave them down in the comments below. As always, I hope you have a great day and stay curious.